Happy you could come along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group. The group including where we are, Church Key, downstairs, Birch and Barley. Greg, a James Beard Award nominee. It is always good to see you. You too. What is on tap this week? So this week, um, I thought we would bring it back to one of my, my most favorite kind of classic beers out there, something you find year-round uh, in, in most parts of the East Coast at the least, in Michigan, of course. This is called Founders Porter uh, from Founders Brewing Company in Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. Um, one of the coolest things about this beer is that it disappeared for a long time, um, for a few years actually, from their portfolio, but came, kind of, uh, came back very strong, and it's actually the fastest growing um, beer in their, in their core uh, portfolio really? right wow. now. So um, I love the double trouble. Oh, That's oh. so good. I wish they'd make more of that. That's one of their uh, seasonals, like the Imperial Stout, where if that was a year round, it, it might even outpace the Porter. But um, as far as it goes, I think this was up 85% uh, wow. in sales in 2012. So nice. an amazing beer. Seven different malts, um, three different hop varietals, uh, ends up being 45 IBUs, which is International Bittering Unit. So it's got a nice roasty, chocolatey intensity, a little bit of a hop bitterness as well. Um, but the cool thing is it's a very simple recipe at the same time. There's no adjuncts in this. It's not, it doesn't use smoked malt. It doesn't use vanilla or coffee uh, or cocoa nibs or anything like that. It's just a straight-up uh, beer with water, yeast, barley malt, and hops. All right. But definitely on the, the roasty oh, yeah. kind of intense side. Now, That's nice. you know, in some ways it almost has the roast intensity you expect from a stout, but it's smoother, it's silkier, it's got a little bit more upfront kind of caramelized sweetness to it, uh, a little bit more balance. And one other thing about the history of this beer, so, you know, Founders began in 1997. At that time, this was one of their core beers. Uh, I think we've talked about their early um, troubles that they had there. In 2001, when they revamped the entire thing, decided to make beers that were intensely flavored that they wanted to drink. This also got reworked. Um, but by 2005, their big brands like Centennial IPA and Dirty Bastard were growing so quickly um, that they just couldn't keep up production on beers like Founders Porter and the Imperial Stout, so they kind of cut it out. Then 2007, the expansion happens, and uh, Dave Engber, who's one of the uh, founders and owners, decided we're gonna bring Founders Porter back, especially because um, they were selling a ton of beer on the East Coast, including in the Mid-Atlantic, and Dave associates the Mid-Atlantic kind of rightfully with porter drinkers, and there's lots of porter drinkers in our area. So in some ways, uh, the drinkers of Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, Maryland, and uh, beyond the Mid-Atlantic are responsible for this beer coming back. Nicely done. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a, really, a really special beer for sure. In, in the history of beer making, is this the, uh, is a darker color and we may have talked about this in the past, is this what beer might have looked like more at the beginning of brewing? Uh, well, actually, no, it's interesting. It would have been dark, but it wouldn't have been this dark. Yeah. Uh, beer would have always been um, kind of brownish amber for, for most of its history, just because uh, to make beer, you have to malt grain, and malting grain involves heating the grain. And so for most of beer's 12,000-year history, that was done very simply over direct flame. Uh, and by doing that, you're going you're gonna to basically brown the grain. So making beer from that would make it brown. But to make a beer black, um, you have to heat the grain up so intensely that it turns black in color, almost looks like a coffee bean. But you have to be careful not to scorch it. So it wasn't until the, until the early 19th century that a guy named Daniel Wheeler in England created a way to, um, to process black malt. And only at that time could you get beer that was black in color. Okay. This, the, the flavor, this, you know, I can't put my finger on it, but it just seems so nicely balanced. I it guess is, it's a really generic is. way to, and, it is, and, though. but it's, uh, but it's uh, intensely balanced too. It's, it's not, now, Founders Porter is, is definitely one of my favorite kind of porters you can find out there. It's a go-to beer for me. I love it a lot, but you know, there's some other ones that I think of too, like um, Firestone uh, Walker's Reserve Porter. And then of course, Great Lakes Edmund Fitzgerald, which I know you're familiar with for many yes, years now. Yes. Um, but like, it's still got a more of a, a roasted intensity in the finish than you find from like the Edmund. The Edmund's a lot more malt forward, um, still has roast character, but what's great about this is, is to your point, even though it's got that intensity, it's 45 IBUs, that's pretty big. It's got that roast, it's got that bit of hot bitterness, it still is quite balanced. I think some people, some people who don't like porters find some of them sludgy or like drinking motor oil, but this isn't no, no, like no, that this whatsoever. Is, this is silky smooth, it's awesome. What would you pair this with? So porters to me, um, uh, just makes sense with ground beef 
in any way you find it, right? So, um, and also it's fall now. So you're thinking football season, you're thinking chili, oh, yeah. um, burgers of any kind, obviously, especially when you grill a burger because you get that roast complexity, balance, harmonizing between the beer and the burger. Um, but also it's amazing with, um, with Tex-Mex, but tacos specifically. Even, you know, you get like a barbacoa, like spicy uh, pork taco, beef tacos, uh, fantastic with the dark roasted qualities here, as well as like the kind of earthy um, hot bitterness in the finish. Uh, by the way, I also uh, nearly forgot to mention, Founders Porter is the 100th beer of the week. It's, it's amazing. We, we're not quite at two years. we two years in December, but this is the 100th beer, wow. which means last week was 99, and fortunately I forgot to sing 99 bottles of beer yeah, on the yeah, wall. I don't know true. if everyone this would have watched the video to, uh, uh, all the way to the end in that case. That's been a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's to the next 100. And uh, before we go, we mentioned before we started taping, uh, DC Flea. Tell me a little bit about what you guys have going on oh, there yeah, so, for people who don't know. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. So, um, Brooklyn Flea was the thing that started out in Williamsburg, uh, this kind of uh, hipster flea market, really cool place. We also have beer and food and things like that. So um, they've spread down to the district now. And every Saturday through the fall, they're doing this really cool hip flea market over uh, by the 930 Club. And Church Key is now doing a pop-up beer garden. So every week you go to the flea, it starts at 10 a.m., goes till 5 p.m. every Saturday by 930 Club. And we're always pouring eight different uh, amazing um, craft beers on draft. So that's a mobile pop-up beer tent. Can you roll that thing by my house yes, uh, we, when you're I, not using I, it? Unfortunately, we probably could. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Well, you can't, you can't fault me for trying. No. Uh, if you've got a question for Greg about beer-related topics, send us an email at beeroftheweek at wtop.com. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, be sure to always drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.